Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Nadeem Abbas. Uh, I'm BIM Integration Lead for one of the consultancy based in Dubai. And I have 14 years of a a AEC experience. Uh, in 2014, you know, first time BIM was introduced to me. And at that point of moment, I felt like uh, BIM is something called 3D model. Then after some years, like a couple of years, uh, I started embedding some uh, smart data in it. So I came to know, no, no, it's not a 3D model, but it's uh, much more than that one. However, uh, if you talk about my projects, I went through, uh, right now I'm, I'm uh, working on HS2, one of the UK project. Before that, I was working for Al Maktoum International Airport, Itihad Rail, New Orbital Highways, Riyadh Metro, Rapid Metro Gurgaon, and Pink City Expressway, one of the expressway in India. I'm a student of MSc in Building Information Modeling and the integrated digital delivery from one of the prestigious college in UK. Uh, recently completed my postgraduate certificate in technical BIM management and Operam information practitioner as well. Okay, that's my brief introduction. And now, so uh, BIM, interesting. Uh, BIM is a set of practices and tools that advance and improve improved the efficiency and quality of the documentation in recent year, identifying BIM with the new technologies and keeping in mind that technology content is much more than a software, you know. So BIM is a method of communication and a new way of project management or even a new way of conducting meetings. ISO 196501 part one defines BIM as a shared digital illustration of a built asset to enable a reliable basis for decisions on the des design, construction, and operation process. So agenda for today is, first of all, we will be talking about why BIM adaptation is slow. Second uh, topic is how we can maximize the profitability uh, uh, of BIM for the organization and how does BIM benefit on the individual level too. And the next is how to educate the modelers about BIM. Last is how to ensure the produced information will be useful for the end user. Okay, so let's start from the first one. So why is BIM adaptation slow? I went through a lot of the research found on NBS and some other websites that is stating that it is gradually, gradually going up. However, if you see uh, the personal experience, personal and professional experience I do have in this field, I have my own observations. Uh, uh, the barriers uh, for BIM adaptation, making slow, you know, is first of all, lack of expertise. If you talk about the expert of BIM, nowadays we cannot find too many guys that have in depth knowledge of BIM, they are stating, okay, they are the BIM expert, but if you, you start interviewing them, you'll find that they uh, are the expert of, of specific tools, but not about the process. So BIM is not just about the some 3D tools. There are the background process involved in it. So second one is lack of awareness. So again, lack, lack of awareness is related to the expertise. And this awareness is why, the lack of awareness is why the basic uh, relation in between two is the lack of trainings. So I'll be talking about the trainings later on. Uh, but uh, based on my recent experience, and I found uh, that uh, there is a problem with the attitude too. Some of the old school project managers, I found that their attitude is just cat. A simple plain cat is more than enough than, you know, uh, more than enough for, uh, they don't need to uh, adopt the, the, the 3D modeling, the BIM environment. They're very happy with the plain cat. Okay, so again, uh, shift in attitude is uh, causing the resistance to change. They are resisting it. However, um, 
hoping that it will change uh, with the time frame you know with the, with the some time it will in a transition phase again uh, next is cost versus benefit if the project is a low cost project uh, uh, a stakeholder prefer not to go with beam environment better will uh, complete it within the plain cad to uh, plain cad to, uh, environment then lack of the cooperation and trust between the stakeholders here i'm talking about the beam environment issues uh, i felt that there is still the lack of uh, the cooperation and trust between the stakeholders they are checking it again even though the the model is s4 stage and checked so yeah these are the barriers till the time i felt with within my career and on my daily basis so uh, now next topic was how BIM can maximize the organization's profitability. So uh, there are the different stakeholders in, in, involved in the whole life cycle. So if I start uh, with the planning stage, so BIM can uh, help our organization to have the effective intelligent models that can help to get uh, volume and clashes strategies second point is a structural map hvac and sustainability analysis beam of course can help there and with the help of common data environment uh, efficient information exchange could be performed next is accurate cost estimation quantity takeoff and time schedules for bidding process used to reduce significantly if we are using the BIM environment. Next is Uniclass, the standard role and documentation to use for risk reduction and QA and QC. If we move forward to the next stage called design. So within the design stage, BIM can help for time scheduling and costing. Uh, respectively 4D and 5D, construction system design and site utilization. Digital fabrication and off-site off manufacturing is also one of the key for, for BIM implementation. Risk mitigation and effective collaboration. Uh, as per my personal experience, this is one of the key feature for BIM in design stage. We reduced uh, the risk a lot and uh, uh, effective collaboration is going on. Wonderful. So next stage called construction, we will be having the asset objectives and information requirement, existing condition and site analysis. Uh, next is cost estimation with the help of BIM is, is really easy. Next is uh, phase planning and programming. Yes, this could be performed with the help of BIM in an efficient way. Uh, once we will jump to the last uh, not but not last but the second last operation stage maintenance and scheduling is very easy once you have a virtual model with you you can you can you know have maintenance and scheduling easily efficient space management and tracking embedded sensor and telemetry data is taking place and this is something we need to you know have in the in the start of any project we should to consider all these if we are going to to implement beam in a in a proper uh, asset life cycle uh, operation should also be maintained you know that should be in the mind in the beginning so that we can uh, have a model that can help to the disaster prediction and planning with the help of preventive maintenance monitoring energy efficient accurately and in the last is providing as built model and information for future project so these are the benefit i found uh, bim can help with different stakeholders and if we talk about the organization most of the organization been covered here starting from the planner designers and uh, ultimately after contractor ultimately to the asset owner so this is how beam can help from the starting point to the ending everything is in control okay so next 
if we talk about uh, uh, how does BIM benefit in the individual level? Okay, I am working for, uh, in a BIM environment, what, but what I am getting out of it? This is a question. So uh, basically, I am just looking the BIM coordinators and modelers on daily basis. Uh, so I just figured out these two uh, range here. It could be furthermore even up to to uh, the end users as well. So if we talk about the BIM modeler, during my early days in 2008 or 2010, I struggled with the plan elevation and cross section. Uh, I remember that days, but nowadays uh, a 3D model based process made it easy for the newcomers. You know, um, a, a newcomer could have a 3D visu uh, visualization for better understanding. Cross sections and elevations are very easy with the help of just a simple cross section. Uh, newcomers can see uh, what is there and how it's, it's moving from here to there. Now, second benefit for the individuals is available libraries. Most of the libraries are available nowadays. And if there is something uh, you need to have, I felt no need to invent the wheel. Go and uh, just change some, some minor changes can help you. And uh, available authoring tools nowadays are very powerful. I'll not advocate or I'll not announce some names here, but they are too powerful. And why should I, uh, you know, adopt personally BIM? Environment, of course, it's a new era of construction that can help to enhance your profile. And if you talk about BIM modelers, they can learn a lot and they can learn how to create uh, the content uh, and they can work on the modeling and drawing production before BIM. The, if you talk about plain CAD, drawing production was not that easy as nowadays we are having. Nowadays, with a single click, if the model is performed per, uh, well, uh, with a single click, uh, and um, a modeler can create n number of the drawings easily. And if there is a change, okay, change the model and uh, different views will be updated accordingly. So I felt it's easy. Now, if you talk about the BIM uh, coordinators, so BIM coordinators nowadays are having the multidisciplinary coordination. Before it was not that easy. Uh, they can, you know, nowadays have the models together. They can check uh, the, the different, uh, different uh, disciplines with the help of the different uh, uh, BIM checking tools. Clash avoidance is a key and clash checking is last. We try to avoid the clash better than, you know, in the end and we are just checking it and we're trying to resolve. So uh, clash avoidance and, avoidance and checking is there. And of course, for personal growth and personal, personal and professional growth, BIM, I felt is really, really doing well. Uh, virtual models versus construction model. Here, a BIM coordinator found that how does a BIM virtual model look alike and how it is on the site. So there is a lot to learn. And uh, again, trainings, execution plan, model auditing, model coordination, and content creation are the key for BIM coordinator, and they used to learn it in an efficient way. So, okay, thank you. Next, uh, if we talk about education, okay. So uh, data from the case study shows that the BIM can positively impact the delivery of construction projects. Furthermore, cost, time, communication, improvement in the coordination process and quality are additional benefit of BIM implementation. Software and hardware issues are the barriers to the organization uh are in the trouble okay so software and hardware issues can be addressed with better trainings for all users across the supply chain the involvement of stakeholders help them get used to innovative work techniques trainings the bim team is one of the strategic responsibility of the bim managers i felt and these training session could follow the 
the topics such as successful delivery ISO 19650 standards, BIM, BIM requirement and outcomes, benefit of adherence to, to CDE and the process, be, benefit to adherence to classification, level of information requirement. So these are some, the, some of the topics uh, a BIM manager can consider. So how we are going to train our modelers for not even modelers, uh, simple cat persons as well. This is what we are doing in our current organizations. So if we give an example of my current organization, here we are having the dedicated uh, training budget. Uh, let's say for two hours a week or three or one could be depending on the work pressure. So first of all, a training budget is a key. Then online, these trainings could be either online or offline i personally prefer online trainings and here i am training some of our guys like 40 to 45 and it's an online training once in a week for a couple of hours and i saw a uh, significant changes and uh, and you know understanding about the new tools and the bim process last but not the least uh, my suggestion is of the bim certification for bim modelers or or you know the people involved in in bim field uh, of our company so that we can make the path to bim easy for them so this is how we can uh, you know train our guys and if we talk about how to ensure the produced information will be useful for the end user so one of the key is asset information requirement. Uh, this is something a user, uh, not user, but organization should address properly. And there is some plain level questions. And of course, if we're talking about the, the end product, of course, there must be in the mind why we are producing uh, this information and how we will be producing and uh, what will be uh, the end result means why it is it is required. So, okay, uh, that's all from my agenda. And in the end, I would like to recommend some of the case studies and industry research that are shown here, uh, such as 1934, reaching uh, for the sky by Alfred Bosom, 1944, uh, the place, placing and management of the building contract by Sir Ernest Simon, 1964, 1965. And if you talk about the uh, construction industry studies, in 1976, I, I went through this study and I found it very, very useful. And there, here, I, here is some points, here are some points that I uh, try to, you know, get from those studies. And still, I felt some of the point is still we are facing on our daily basis, you know. Uh, Sometimes design coordination is lagging behind and can get information, too many contracts and type. This is something we came, uh, we overcome on this one. However, management planning and special coordination is there, checking of the drawings. And if you talk about 1944, some of the uh, points is still, even after 1976, you see 1994, there is a gap of years. And it's still in this study, uh, co called construction constructing the team by Sir uh, Michael Latham. Uh, the same was there too many contract type management and clear information design coordination and and he he added in in effective adversarial fragmented and incapable of delivering for its customer. So this is for construction industry, you know. <clears throat> And again, 1998, so low profitability, lack of training, skill, you know, training, skill, skill shortage. We are still facing the skill shortage. That is why our organization have the dedicated hours to train our guys here. And we are getting the good results. So uh, here are some of the quick resources I'd like to recommend for you. Uh, try to go through some UK BIM framework, Opera Academy, LinkedIn Learning, and Google Scholar. So <clears throat> Google Scholar is a free free scholar uh, website. You can go there, can check the research papers. This is what I used to do on my daily basis, and it's really helpful for me. So uh, I felt I'm done with my 
uh, presentation for today thank you very much any question please let me know i'm here